for our hypertension and heart health segment, we have Dr. Dennis Treese, a primary care physician with the Detroit Medical Center. He will talk about the dangers of high blood pressure and the effects of hypertension on our heart health. Thank you, Dr. Treese, for joining us. Good morning. My name is Dr. Dennis Treese. I'm a family practice physician practicing medicine in the city of Detroit. I've been invited this morning to speak to you about hypertension. So what is hypertension? Hypertension is an elevated blood pressure reading. When we uh, take your blood pressure, we take uh, two readings. The top number, the systolic number, over the bottom number, the diastolic number. The systolic represents the pressure in your arteries when your heart contracts. The diastolic represents the relaxation of those arteries when your heart relaxes. So what is a normal blood pressure? Normal blood pressure is probably around 120 over 80. But there are two stages of hypertension. Stage one is when your blood pressure is 130 to 139 over 80. Stage two is when your blood pressure is greater than 140 over 80. So in order to diagnose hypertension, it requires your physician to take blood pressure readings in the office and have you to take blood pressure readings at home. So we, th we usually recommend that the patient will take a blood pressure reading twice a day, once in the morning, once at night, for, for a week. Bring those readings in to your physician. He or she will take multiple blood pressure readings in the office usually on three occasions, and then compare those blood pressure readings and see if you have actually a diagnosis of hypertension. Uh, your doctor will also monitor your technique for taking the blood pressure. The cuff should be around your arm so that it compresses the brachial artery and uh, you can record the, the, your blood pressure reading there. Blood pressure cuffs that go around your wrist are not as accurate as the ones that go on the upper arm. So your doctor will review that. So why is hypertension important? Hypertension is important because we are trying to prevent what's called target in organ damage. Now what I mean by that is the heart itself is damaged from hypertension. It becomes enlarged, outgrows its blood supply, can lead to a weakened heart, thickened heart muscles called left ventricular hypertrophy, congestive heart failure, chronic kidney disease, uh, which is, ranges from st stages one through five, and terminal uh, kidney disease, which is end stage renal disease, which leads to dialysis. Uh, in addition, uh, cardiovascular events uh, are prevented with normal blood pressure readings. And what I mean by that is, some patients will have strokes, heart attacks, coronary artery disease, and even bleeding in the brain secondary to uncontrolled hypertension. So there is a couple of scenarios though where your physician will not um, do the home blood pressure readings and the office blood pressure readings, and they may recommend immediate starting of medication to control your blood pressure. Those are hypertensive urgency where your blood pressure is 180 over 120 or greater. Uh, hypertension that shows already uh, target in organ disease, such as hypertensive retinopathy, damage to the eye, or ischemic changes to your heart. Uh, if the patient can't afford a blood pressure device at home, or the insurance won't pay for it, then the doctor will usually take three separate blood pressure readings in the office and determine from that if you need to be treated for hypertension. So, the, we need to talk about treatment for hypertension. Treatment for hypertension uh, requires uh, either medication or what we call lifestyle modifications. Now, lifestyle modifications are important because they actually work. So, let me talk about a couple things that you can do uh, with your lifestyle that will help to manage your blood pressure or e even eliminate it. The first thing is a um, low sodium diet, dietary salt reduction. Your physician will usually recommend a two gram uh, or, or two gram or 2,000 milligram 
diet low in sodium for your blood pressure. This is known to decrease your blood pressure. A potassium rich diet, uh, but that should be only, a potassium rich diet should only be done at, under the supervision of your physician because if you're on medications that prevent the potassium from being excreted, it can cause problems. And if you have kidney disease, you have to be careful about excessive potassium. Weight loss. Uh, weight loss is probably one of the most important features of treating hypertension. If you lose weight, significant weight, your blood pressure will go down, guaranteed. It seems to be difficult for most patients to lose weight, but the ones that do tend to be successful at reducing their blood pressure. The DASH diet, you've probably heard about that. It's a dietary approach to stop hypertension. This is similar to the Mediterranean diet, where the diet is rich in fruits, vegetables, uh, low-fat uh, dairy products, uh, whole grains, poultry, nuts, things like that, a healthy diet. Exercise, it is important. Uh, a lot of people are not able to exercise, especially the older population, but exercise will lower your blood pressure. And alcohol intake. So alcohol intake is, is okay up to a certain point. For men, we recommend two drinks per day maximum. Women, one drink per day. Uh, I try to encourage patients not to do that on a daily basis, but those are some of the restrictions that you can follow and still be within the guidelines. So let's talk about medication, treatment for it. Now, not all patients that have hypertension, of course, need medications. Some do. The ones that do, uh, it should be a shared uh, decision between the patient and the physician before medication is started. If both patient and physician agree on the medication, uh, side effects are discussed, uh, how long the patient's going to be on the medication, then the compliance tends to be a whole lot better. So what do we use? We use water pills, first of all, uh, thiazide diuretics. We use medications called CCB, calcium channel blockers. We also use ACE inhibitors and the last uh, medication are ARBs. Now this is not a comprehensive list, but these are some of the most common medications that we employ to reduce your blood pressure. So the goal of treatment is twofold. So we tell the patients when they go home, your blood pressure should be less than 135 over 80. When they come to the office, we know that the office setting is a little, little more stressful than home, so we look at a blood pressure reading of 140 over 90 or lower. The last thing I want to talk about is hypertension in children. After practicing uh, medicine in Detroit for 40 years, I've, I'm convinced that hypertension starts in childhood and adolescence. So it's important for kids, children, to be examined, blood pressure monitored uh, to prevent hypertension. Early onset of hypertension in childhood leads to the development of cardiovascular events. Early diagnosis and treatment can reduce a lot of complications. Studies have shown that there are functional and structural changes associated with children that have hypertension. And unfortunately, hypertension in children leads to hypertension in adults. So successful management of hypertension depends on your doctor identifying, number one, if you have what we call primary or secondary hypertension. The second thing is the doctor can help to identify risk factors that can affect your blood pressure, such as obesity, high cholesterol, diabetes, and even a poor diet. Last, uh, your doctor needs to evaluate children that may need uh, medication to treat their blood pressure. That is not that common, but with growing obesity, it's becoming more common. So this list and discussion today is not comprehensive for hypertension, but the important part is that you should at least see your physician, a physician, once a year for a complete examination, paying attention to the blood pressure readings. Thank you.